Good morning, Year 6. Today in our English lesson, we're going to begin thinking about how we can uh, attack and, and, uh, and pull apart the poems that the uh, celebrated poets that we looked at yesterday have written. Today we're going to be thinking particularly about in Flanders Field, and we're going to be looking at the skill of symbolism and how we might make symbolic references in our writing and in our lives generally. Okay. Uh, to be successful today, we're going to need to understand um, what was in the poem, so we're going to need to read in Flanders Field. We're going to consider the messages the poet desired and wanted to deliver. We're going to think about how symbolism is used. We're going to identify the symbolism symbol that you would choose to represent yourself, and we're going to contemplate the other devices that were used in it. We're going to pull the poem apart a little bit. First job, I'd like you to pause this and I'd like you to have a look at which poet from our learning yesterday each of these facts applies to. So for each of these eight facts, there's a poet that they did. So there's two per poet because we did four poets yesterday. We looked at four poets. So which poet was working in France? Which poet joined the Sussex Who was Canadian? Who was accidentally shot? Who wrote in Flanders Field? Who was killed just before the end of the war, seven days before, and 4th of November 1918? Who wrote five war sonnets? And who was killed on the Greek island of Skyros? Okay. Pause it if you can think about them. Don't need to write them down if you can just have a ponder who you can remember. Okay, and let's check if you were right now. So five, four, three, two, one. Okay, Wilfred Owen was working in France, and he was also the gentleman who was killed just seven days before the end of the First World War. Um, Secret soon joined the Sussex Yeomanry um, just before the war started in 1914, and he was accidentally shot by his own sergeant, but he did survive the war. Rupert Brooke wrote those war sonnets, and he also died. Um, he was also the man who died in Greece after being bitten. John McRae was the poet we're looking at today of in Flanders Field, and he was Canadian. He was also a Physician, author, and artist. So it's quite uh, a collection of professions and skills that he demonstrated in his life. Okay, guys, we're thinking today about the word symbol okay, and symbolism. Uh, the Latin word symbol, lum, symbolum, was a creed or a token or a mark, a token or a mark. So it represented something. And a sim symbol is a sum something that represents or stands for something else. It shows um, what something else means, okay? Especially a feeling, an abstract concept. So lo love or anger or fury or, or a belief, okay? An, an example of a belief being represented might be a cross or another in in indication of faith or you could have something such as this which is a representation of the 1960s and 70s uh, anti-nuclear movement which were campaigning against nuclear weapons and they wanted people to be at peace with one another synonymous then with symbols would be um, sign or a representation and antonymous so the opposite of those would be blank or random so no image at all a symbol that I have in my life on me is my wedding ring. Okay, that symbolizes a commitment that Mrs. Spring and I made to each other when we got married. Okay, so that's a symbolic item of clothing. Okay, it's not something that has a function really. It's, it's something that it represents something. Okay, so here's our poem. I'm going to read it to you. I'd like to read it twice. And after we've read it twice, we're going to think about some of the different uh, elements of symbolism within the poem. So it's by John McRae, who was, as I've said before, a, a he was a poet, but he was also a soldier, and he was also a, a medic, so he was somebody who cared for people. In Flanders fields the poppies blow, between the crosses row and row, that marks our place and in the sky, the lark still bravely singing fly. Scarce heard amid the gardens below, we are the dead, short days ago. We lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe, to you from failing hands we throw. The torch be yours to hold it high, if ye break faith with us who die. We shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders fields. Okay, so just sit on it for a second, have a think about how it makes you feel. Now I'll read it again. Flanders fields, the poppies blow, between the crosses, row on row, that mark our place and in the sky, the lark still bravely singing fly. Scarce heard amid the guns below, we are the dead short days ago. We lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe, to you from failing hands we throw, the torch be yours to hold it high. 
If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep though poppies grow in Flanders fields. So as I read it and was thinking about it, I noticed certain aspects of it that I'm going to unpick with you later. But as I read it, it made me feel very aware of the rhythm of it. So the, dun, 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 dun. the rhymes at the end of the lines resonated. That, that was something I was aware of. It also felt very mournful, very sad. Okay, There's references to death. There's references to war with guns. There's references to the fact that you don't normally hear many birds because of the guns being there. It made me feel quite pensive, so thoughtful about things. The poppies then are one of the key symbols. So poppies, they're, they're symbolising dead souls, okay? So the poppies that are blowing between the crosses, okay? The poppies that are there swinging in the wind, okay? There's crosses either side of them where people's graves are marked. And Flanders was this place where lots of the fighting happened. That's why the field there are resonant for people. The torch then, to you, to you we pass this torch, okay? So the dead are passing the torch. That means they're passing the hope. They're passing the hope to the future. That's a symbol of hope. Here we've got lark. The lark still bravely singing. Now they're ahead of the noise of the guns. And that's hope, life. That's the idea that symbolizes that things could get better. The row on row of crosses shows not just the rows of poppies, but the rows of um, dead soldiers, okay, the row on row, okay, so the poppies blowing, blowing that are row on row are also the dead soldiers that are lying dead next to each other. What do you think of when you see a poppy? We see them a lot in October and November. People wear them around Remembrance Day. People choosing. Sometimes they're controversial because people feel people should choose to, should, should, should be made to. Do you think they evolved as a symbol because they grew in the fields and because they grew in the fields, people thought that they could represent the soldiers and the wives and the families of soldiers knitted them and made them and then sold them to raise money for the soldiers and for the families of soldiers who were no longer able to earn because they were dead or hurt. They become a symbol that's associated, but they do have a, a link originally to the fields where the soldiering took place. How do you feel when you see the images in the left? The top one on the left has the flags to show the symbol, to symbolise the country that people come from. The ones on the right have the symbols of the poppy on each of the crosses to show where the soldiers, that the soldiers are dead and they're being remembered. The cross is a symbol in and of itself. It's a symbol which shows um, that somebody's likely to have a link to the faith, to Christianity. Symbols aren't limited just, though, to the idea of um, faith or to the idea of war. We see symbols all the time. We see symbols in an emoji. What symbols is the one on the left showing? Am I happy or am I sad or am I cheeky? The one in the middle, is somebody in love or is somebody angry? The one on the right, are they confused or clear? You know better than I do what a text message emoji would show. So what do they show? What do you think a symbol is? We looked at it as a definition in our first piece of work. Can you say out loud or can you say to somebody else what a symbol is? Or can you think about what a symbol is? Okay, guys, so a symbol then, a symbol, a shape or a mark or a character, an idea which, which represents something else. It's not about what it is, it's about what it shows or what it, the belief that it shows. It's like a shorthand. It's a simple way of saying or showing an idea. What do you think? Your idea or your definition similar? What do you think these two symbols show? You've got a sheet to complete later. If you want to, you can find out what they mean and then summarise it. Or if you want to, you can have a write down of now what you think they show. What do you think the C within the black circle shows? What do you think the skull and crossbones show? Okay, so the C is about copyright. It basically means that you can't make the same product and sell it as I've made. So if my tie was very fancy, it might have a copyright sign somewhere on the back of it, which would mean that another company couldn't copy it and sell it as though it was a new idea. It means that that, that idea is on, on owned. And the actual C, copyright itself, is a symbol that we know everywhere. Okay. The skull and crossbones then is quite interesting. Sometimes we think of it as a sign of pirates, so you might see it on a flag. Sometimes if, if my bottle here had that on, I'd need to know to keep it away from my children because it would show that it's very dangerous if they consumed it or if they touched it. It could be quite hazardous. So it's got different symbols for different meanings, different contexts. Okay. 
but it represents danger, represents fear. How these two? We've talked a little bit already about the campaign for nuclear disarmament, and that's a certain symbol. It didn't just symbolise that. It became a symbol that people put together as hippies, so these ideas that people were counterculture in the 1960s against war, but against some of the conventional ways of living. Originally, it was just about nuclear disarmament. It was about the British campaign for nuclear disarmament, but it became a symbol which showed people who were against maybe having normal jobs, maybe against going to work in normal ways in favour of protecting the environment. It became about a whole belief system. This symbol, if I do it to somebody, it means a good thing. It means perfect, brilliant. However, in some countries, it can be quite a rude symbol. In Brazil and uh, areas in the Middle East, such as Iran and Iraq, it can be a rude symbol. And in Japan, it means money. So symbols can be differently taken. It can be representing different things in different places to different people. In writing, sometimes characters can be uh, doing things or talking of things symbolically. So in a book of Mice and the Men, there's lots of talk about rabbit. And the idea is that this character, Lenny, he, he, he wants about dreams for the future. And the idea that they've got freedom is represented in the rabbits. Okay? And the rabbits having actions is about freedom. William Wordsworth was another poet, and he used symbolism in his poem. I wandered lonely as a cloud that floats on over, high over vales and hills, when all at once I saw a crowd, a host of golden daffodils, beside the lake, beneath the trees, fluttering and dancing in the breeze. Continuous as the stars that shine and twinkle on the Milky Way, they stretched in never-ending line along the margin of a bay. Ten thousand saw I at a glance, tossing their heads in sprightly dance. So what do you think the cloud symbolizing that? We've had stanzas there. So there's two stanzas, two verses, two collections of writing within the poem. What what objects are there in there? What could they be symbolizing? What what do they represent? What do you think? Is it while you think about that? So the objects I noticed was five, four, three, two, one. Objects I noticed then. The idea of cloud, daffodils, and stars. If I'm thinking about the cloud, I'm thinking that it's showing it's on its own, it's lonely. I'm thinking the daffodils are symbolising host, hope and future, their growth. I'm thinking the stars show the, show the enormity of the world, how massive everything is. They all symbolise something different to me as a reader. They might symbolise something different to you. What, what picture would you draw to symbolise yourself now? Would it be a question mark because you're not sure what's going on? Would it be a, a smile to show something? What would it be? Would it be a sun to show that you're beaming, radiating, you're happy? Would it be rain to show that you're unhappy? Would it be, would it be, would it be, would it be hands over your face to symbolise that you're fearful? What would a symbol? Would it be a, a plant starting to grow? What would a symbol be for you? Draw that in that your pad, please. Maybe you just shoot for today. You know. So I'd, I'd like to try and guess what it's about and see if I can. See, see if maybe we can share it in one of our Zoom meetings. Right, guys, just at the end of the session, you've got to go through this poem again. You've got to think about the number of standards, so you've got that question, so remember that's a section of the poem. You've got to think about the language that's important within the poem. When I read it, I noticed words like scarce heard, so it meant that it wasn't heard very often. Lived rather than live, so it shows that the protagonists in the poem are dead. Quarrel, so an argument is to continue. So this argument is carrying on. This is take up our quarrel with the foe. So somebody else is going to take over the battle. I noticed that other techniques such as alliteration, such as rhyming, were used by Tom McRae in his poem. And what I'd like you to do is write about the symbols you've seen, write about the symbol that you think goes for you, and draw that symbol. And finally, I'd like you to write your response to Inflanders Field. I look forward to seeing your responses. Thank you for listening today. Bye.